Thank you for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, Israel and its supporters furious over the U.S. failing to veto a United Nations resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza without the release of the hostages, but the Jewish state promising to invade the last of my stronghold of Rafa, even without U.S. support and killing high-ranking Hamas commanders. While the war rages on in Gaza, Hezbollah keeps up its attacks on Israel from the north. We're going to take you to a border town to see just how dangerous life has become. Here at home, the search for survivors after the bridge collapse in Baltimore has been suspended with six presumed dead as the governor of Maryland prays with the families of the victims. And it began as an anthem for the new year. But then this song by a Caribbean gospel artist has taken the world by storm. We're going to tell you about the unexpected hit called Find Me Here. All those stories and more are ahead today on CBN News Watch. This is CBN News Watch. We begin this half hour with the divide between Israel and the United States. As critics say, the U.S. veto of a U.N. Security Council resolution has given Hamas everything it wants. Despite the political divide, Israel is still keeping up the fight, killing a key Hamas commander. Chris Mitchell brings us the story from Jerusalem. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin pressed Israel's defense minister to make guarding the civilian population of Gaza a top priority. Protecting Palestinian civilians from harm is both a moral necessity and a strategic imperative. In Gaza today, the number of civilian casualties is far too high and the amount of humanitarian aid is far too low. He also told Yoav Gallant that Israel can defeat Hamas without invading Rafa, where more than a million refugees from the war are holed up. Gallant insists Israel must go after Hamas and Rafa to wipe out the terror group's last military battalions and to retrieve the hostages, and he called for the U.S. to stand by their side. The negotiation on the hostage issue and Hamas positions require us to join hands in, the, in our military and diplomatic uh, efforts. Israel's prime minister says the Jewish nation will invade Rafah with or without U.S. help. Benjamin Netanyahu is still fuming over America's decision not to veto Monday's U.N. Security Council vote, demanding a ceasefire in Gaza, but not linking it to the release of the hostages. Well-known Jewish attorney Alan Dershowitz told an Israeli channel that decision will have consequences on the ground in Israel and in the fall elections in the U.S. It will lengthen the war. It will make it more difficult for Israel. It is a terrible decision for America. It's a terrible decision for Israel. And it will drive a great many Jewish Democrats like me away from voting for the Biden administration. Critics say the decision strengthens Hamas in hostage negotiations after Hamas refused to give up the hostages unless Israel agrees to stop the war. The Israeli delegation walked out. On Tuesday, the New York Times published the first released hostage testimony of sexual abuse. Amit Susanna testified that her captor sexually violated her repeatedly. This is an horrific testimony. This is a wake up a wake-up call to the world to act, to do everything and pressure Hamas to free our hostages. 130 hostages remain in Hamas captivity, many of them women. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. While the world focuses on the war with Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah repeatedly has been launching attacks against Israel in the northern part of the country. CBN News Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl takes us to one border town to see just how dangerous life is becoming for the few who remain there. This is Metula, Israel's northernmost town, sitting about 50 feet from the Lebanese border. Since October 7th, Hezbollah has rained down more than 150 rockets and anti-tank missiles at the 620 homes here. CBN News joined other journalists on a brisk tour as town council head David Azulai urged us to keep moving due to potential danger. I'm standing in a house in Metula that was hit by Hezbollah fire. 130 homes in this tiny border community have been hit by Hezbollah fire. Metula is actually older than the state of Israel. And now there's no residents allowed to stay here. We can't enter our houses. 
I am the head of the council. I live on the eastern side. For three weeks, I didn't go into my house except to take clothes. I'm not sleeping at home. Almost all the town's 1,600 residents evacuated within the first two weeks of the war. Only 30 security personnel remain, staying in a protected area. Houses empty, ripe fruit hangs on garden trees. Fortunately, no one has been killed here, although one civilian and two soldiers have been wounded. The car behind me was hit by Hezbollah fire. The driver was getting out at the time. He was wounded, but he managed to survive. Azulai says peace is the only answer, and there's only one way to it. The moment the Americans and Iranians finish the story and there is no more threat, there also won't be Hezbollah, because the one who activates Hezbollah is Iran. Everything starts with Iran and spreads out. By the way, Iran is also against the Americans and the Israelis. Former IDF intelligence officer Sarit Zahavi feels like war began in the north on October 8th. It's a little bit different from the south because here the communities are even closer to the fence and there are many of these like that. That's 43 communities that became ghost towns. Zahavi says since the 2006 war with Lebanon, the north has been relatively quiet with only dozens of attacks. As a mother and resident here, her fear is what life will look like going forward. Now we have daily. The average of attacks coming by Hezbollah, by Hezbollah itself claiming responsibility is an average of about 50 attacks every week in the past few months. And remember, they are not supposed to be there at all by UN Security Council resolution. That's why we saw the preparations for an invasion. We saw how they were deployed on the border. Ten years ago, Hezbollah publicized a plan on its television station for thousands of fighters to invade and take over the Galilee. The idea is to enter into communities from various areas along the borderline, while each force that will enter will have a mission. And the mission is a civilian community. Naria, Shlomi, to trap civilians to become human shields, to take over the main roads, to block the main roads, to prevent any assistance from coming. All the principles that we saw that Hamas executed in October 7 exist in a Hezbollah invasion plan from a decade ago. Zahavi believes Hezbollah now prefers to drag Israel into a war rather than invade. She adds, given its entrenchment, forcing Hezbollah to withdraw from southern Lebanon, as Israel is demanding, won't truly provide this region the security it needs. Everybody's talking about withdrawal of Hezbollah, right? What is Hezbollah? It's a terrorist organization, it's a social movement, and it's a political party in Lebanon, member in the Lebanese government and the Lebanese parliament. And that's why I think that the wording if we talk about a diplomatic arrangement, should refer to disarm rather than withdraw. Zahavi maintains it's clear that Hezbollah's loyalty is not to Lebanon or its people. They follow Iran, its ideologies and its interests, because the regime has a plan to unite all fronts, Hezbollah, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and other proxies. This is a painting that was done on the Lebanese side. You can understand the idea on their way to Jerusalem. That's the mission, that's the idea. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Northern Israel. The search for survivors suspended after Tuesday's bridge collapse in Baltimore. We're gonna look at what happened and how the governor of Maryland prayed with the families of the victims. Plus, the Supreme Court hearing a major case on limiting the availability of the so-called abortion pill. We're gonna bring you the details on both of these important stories. It's all coming up when we come back. You're watching CBN News Watch. The Coast Guard has suspended its search for survivors following the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore after a ship hit it early Tuesday morning. Six people are presumed dead. CBN's Wendy Griffith has that story. Wednesday morning, the Coast Guard called off its search and rescue for the six missing people, saying it was too dangerous for their divers to be in the water. We do not believe that we're going to find any of these individuals still alive. The six people were part of a construction crew repairing potholes on the Francis Scott Key Bridge at the time it was struck. Another worker survived, but is in serious condition. 
Maryland Governor Wes Moore met and prayed with families of the victims. We've had a chance to spend time earlier today with the, uh, with the families, and um, they're remarkable. They're, uh, they're prayerful people, and we had the chance to pray with them. We had a chance to pray for them, and, um, and we want to let them know that, uh, that we are going to keep on praying for them, and not just us, but they have got 6.3 million people, and they've got a whole country and a whole world who's, uh, who's praying for their peace. Moments before the collision, it appears black smoke was rising from the ship as the lights on board went out. Hold all traffic on the key bridge. Uh, there's a ship approaching that just lost their steering. Officials on the ground stopped traffic on the bridge when the crew on board notified authorities they lost power, saving countless lives. There was a Mayday who literally, by being able to stop cars from coming over the bridge, uh, these people are heroes. The NTSB says the ship called Dally is nearly 1,000 feet long, weighing 95,000 tons. An inspection in June 2023 found issues with its propulsion and auxiliary machinery. Investigators are planning to go on board the ship as early as today. I do not know of a bridge that has been constructed to withstand a direct impact from a vessel of this size. President Biden pledged federal funds to rebuild the bridge and reopen the port of Baltimore. Meanwhile, ocean carriers are being diverted from the port of Baltimore to the port of Virginia to keep trade moving. The collapse expected to have a serious impact on supply chains, as well as the state of Maryland's economy. Wendy Griffith, CBN News. The Supreme Court heard oral arguments Tuesday about whether the Food and Drug Administration should restore safety regulations on the so-called abortion pills, specifically one requiring three mandatory visits to a doctor. When the agency removed those in-person requirements, it made the pills available by mail. CBN medical reporter Lori Johnson brings us the details. Hundreds of demonstrators gathered in front of the U.S. Supreme Court building, eager to make their voices heard, some hoping the justices rule against those who want to limit access to the abortion pill. Their argument that, oh, it's dangerous for the woman is absolutely incorrect scientifically. Others think mifepristone, now used in two-thirds of all abortions, is unsafe and too widely available. The clinic had told me they pressured chemical abortion and said that it would be easier than surgical abortion, but that wasn't true, that was a lie. Outside the Supreme Court, CBN's Tara Mergener points to the last time we saw similar demonstrations. This case comes less than two years after the court relinquished federal oversight of abortion rights, leaving the issue to individual states and their legislatures. Inside the courthouse, while the FDA argues removing doctor's visits to get the abortion pill isn't dangerous, Justice Alito questioned the safety of removing all three. Isn't that obvious that three things that may be innocuous or not excessively dangerous if engaged in by themselves may become very dangerous when they're all done together? And why shouldn't the FDA have addressed that? The attorney for a group of pro-life doctors pointed out that the FDA itself admitted the drugs harm a significant number of women. The FDA concedes that between 2.9 and 4.6 percent of women will end up in the emergency room. The FDA acknowledges that women are even more likely to need surgical intervention and other medical care without an in-person visit. Even so, some justices appeared to give the FDA more weight when it comes to certain decisions. The reality is, even if there is some increase in emergency room visits, the question of when that rises to a sufficient safety risk is up to the FDA, correct? The attorney countered that the FDA behaved recklessly by removing safeguards, which can put doctors in the position of unwillingly taking part in abortions. FDA's outsourcing of abortion drug harm to respondent doctors forces them to choose between helping a woman with a life-threatening condition and violating their conscience. As to the doctor's conscience concerns, Justice Jackson questioned whether that would warrant limiting the availability of mifepristone. 
do we have to also entertain your argument that no one else in the world can have this drug or no one else in America uh, should have this drug in order to protect your clients? While the justices did seem to consider safety issues associated with mifepristone, many comments focused on the issue of standing, that is, whether the pro-life doctors have enough legal cause to bring the case. The high court is expected to announce its decision in June. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Turning to the lighter side, the story of a song from a Caribbean gospel artist that began as a simple anthem for the new year and grew into something so much more. We're going to hear from the singer behind the song right after this. Welcome back to CBN News Watch. Caribbean gospel artist Sherwin Gardner has a song that's taking the world by storm. Find Me Here began as a New Year anthem, but social media has given it quite a different story. At this moment, it has seen more than a billion views on TikTok, and it's still growing. And it all began with just a 46-second chorus. Something good gonna happen in this year. Find me here, 940 million streams and counting. Where'd this song come from? What happened? Uh, this is definitely um, the Holy Spirit is the best, <laughs> the best answer. Gonna find me here. Oh, yeah. I always was saying this in, in worship. I worship lead in the Bahamas and mm -hmm. Bahamas Harvest Church. But at the end of worship, when I pray, I always say something good is going to happen for you. And... Um, I then heard the melody in my head on the 23rd of December, something good is going to happen in this year. Mm -hmm. And I am grateful that I made it here. So mm -hmm. I, I recorded that little mel melody and then I finished the production. But then the Lord was nudging me and saying, hey, blessings need to find you here. Favor going to find you here. Favor going to find me here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm missing money going to find me. So this wasn't really supposed to be like a big release. It's, yeah. it's just 46 seconds. <laughs> you know, 46 it, seconds. <laughs> yeah, it was just a 46 <laughs> second clip. You know, as artists, you, you try to stay relevant on social media. Mm -hmm. So that's what that was. Mm -hmm. And um, But it's also a personal prayer mm -hmm. for me saying that something good is going to find me here and I'm grateful that I made it here. Mm -hmm. Blessings going to find me here. Favor going to find me here. Money going to find me here. You've been singing since five. Yeah. I am what they call the miracle child in my family because mm. my mom, uh, she, when she was pregnant with me, at that time she didn't know and she was very sick. All the doctors told my mom because she was sick and because of all the tests and the different things that she did, she had to abort me because I'd, I, I would either, either be deformed or crippled or stillbirth and, you know, all the different scientific ways that or reasons. And she said, if God gave life, he's the only one who could take life. And uh, she put me into the hands of the Lord and from five years old, um, I started singing. I, 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 I'm just a little dark, but outside of that, I do have no issues <laughs> health-wise, you know, so I, I'm, I'm good, you know, and, and God is, he showed himself faithful from then, mm -hmm. and he's showing himself faithful to now, you know, because 40 years is, sig uh, is significant that this could happen on the beginning of my 40th anniversary, mm -hmm. you know, as the Bible says, like coming out of the wilderness into the promised land, you yeah. know, so this is that season where you're really coming out into the promised land. Mm -hmm. These seasons I've been facing, but this year your blessings I'm embracing. My TikTok was at 20,000 followers. I called one of my friends who was an artist and I said, listen, this song is going viral. <laughs> like, it's going up. So he's like, going viral? <laughs> <laughs> your song is already viral because he's in Trinidad and mm -hmm. it was Everybody's using already, it. Oh, wow. So everybody is already using it. Since then, it's been a journey. This song that is just an affirmation is now being used by many people. Yeah. It's still on the charts now, you know, mm -hmm. and that in, in itself just shows how far this blessing is going. Blessings have become my way. Winning, we winning and we here to stay. Is the blessings me say will find me here. Nine 
143 million people just heard a song that speaks about favor, speaks mm. about blessing, speak about the goodness of God and, mm. and being hopeful yeah. for good things to happen for them in their life. And that to me is more outstanding than just being on the billboard or being uh, here and there. But you know, knowing that people are now using this affirmation um, in their videos yes, yes. Is, is, is shining light on who he is and the goodness of God. Ah, oh, I love it. I love it. How has this changed your life? I had my share of success, but nothing in comparison to, to, to this song. Um, I think it put me in a, a different conversation and it opened up doors for me to be able to do as the Bible say, go in there for and preach and teach to all nations. Yeah. You know, God is just opening these doors and, and um, really... It's something that is just, I would say, an unusual mm -hmm. <laughs> blessing, mm -hmm. but it's really something that I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to him for because this is not about me, but it's about pointing people to him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I miss the blessings gonna find me. Sherwin Gardner's single, Find Me Here, is available right now wherever you stream, purchase, or download your music. Be sure to join us tonight for an all-new Studio 5. We've got a look at the film One Life. It is the story of Nicholas Winton, who rescued more than 600 children from the impending grip of Nazis. Anthony Hopkins plays the role of Winton in the movie, and we're going to talk to the film's director. You can catch that tonight on Studio 5 on the CBN News Channel. It begins at 8 Eastern. You can also watch it on the CBN News app, or you can see it on YouTube. Stay with us. We'll be right back with an encouraging word for your day ahead. Time now for your Wednesday word, and today's word is love. It's my focus all week as we remember Christ's final week on earth. So know this, love is more than a word. Love is more than a feeling. Love is more than a choice. Love is God, and God is love. And in the words and lyrics of Sherwin Gardner, because of that love, something good is going to find me here. Blessings will find me here. Favor is going to find me here. More importantly, the love of God is going to find me here. Well, that will do it for this edition of CBN News. Watch, remember, you can always find more of our news programs. You can find them on the CBN News channel at any time, as well as online at cbnnews.com. Take a moment and let us know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us, newswatch at cbn.com. You can also reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll see you back here tomorrow.